I love books. There's a stack of books behind me though that are very disturbing and troubling. They are manifestations of this new phenomena that is called queer theory and gender theory. What they have done is they have put into the form of little cardboard books for little hands, big ideas like transgenderism, transsexuality, binary, non-binary. Unfortunately, what they are doing is now adulterating the minds of children that they cannot absorb or process. It is called grooming because grooming amounts to having age-inappropriate conversations with children, oftentimes for nefarious purposes, but we do know that these are conversations that are best left at these young ages for parents with their children. Well, Ashra, you have issues with Eli's gender unicorn as a teaching tool, right? Yes. Tell us what we're looking at here. Well, you were looking at TSER's fantastic little gender unicorn. It teaches students of all ages about gender identity, expression, and attraction. It teaches them that everything is on a spectrum and they should be able to explore and express themselves. And, and you say that this is appropriate uh, beginning in kindergarten. I mean, I, I've worked with parents who brought it into preschools even. Um, I, I see you nodding your head, but I'm sure you're very excited about it. And um, I, I do want to point out that there are plenty of trans youth, myself included, who have come out at young ages. If I had this as a tool when I was eight years old, I would have been so much more comfortable with myself. I would have known who I was and that I wasn't alone. Just to piggyback on that, the signs of gender dysphoria develop very young. Like you can see it in a three-year-old. And by the time they're four, their gender identity is pretty much solidified. So you will see the signs of someone who's not happy with the gender they're born with very little. Actually, that's not true. That is not true. You can suppress Most, it. Their gender expression no, is different. True. Gender all expression the depends on the, the last. All the science for the last 100 years has shown in boys who, who experience gender dysphoria between two and three, 85% of them simply grow up to be gay. Oh, I love that you're saying this. And the other five, exactly don't interrupt, which one it don't is. interrupt this is, this is, and be rude. I will, the other five you don't think that dismissing an entire group be of people is being rude. And then there are one or two percent the transgender dysphoria persists into adulthood. At the age of four, a child is not going to know what emotional attraction means versus physical attraction. No, children and it is, children do get crushes, and this, though. This is a completely age-inappropriate <sighs> product to be putting in front of children and, and hijacking this unicorn concept. You I, say, I'm saying at every age. You, you Gender say is an every three, age four years old, and you say 12. I say the signs develop young, but kids between four and six just can't comprehend that so there's the any other unicorn, reality right than what they see on TV or what their families expose so them to. So you disagree that the unicorn conversation should be no, held at I, three or four? I think it should be um, age appropriate. Like, you don't sit down a five-year-old and be like, listen, you can, you know, the gender Talk unicorn also isn't about the child themselves. It's about what could be. It's about possibilities it's of in gender and sexuality. It's curriculum in school districts. So are you saying we shouldn't ever present any um, children with books about um, gay men? I am saying that your gender unicorn concept is a completely unethical practice in our school systems to children and it should be eliminated. It well, is right tell, now. Tell that to the tens of thousands of schools that are using yeah. it. Why is it that they're using it? You've got this free PDF that is people are downloading irresponsibly and it should not be in the school system.